cylinders, for example this pen, can be quite difficult to draw because of the principle based on being able to draw an ellipse. If we take a cylinder and examine it carefully, if we look at it directly face on, it's circular. But as we rotate the object into 3D, you will notice that this edge and the far edge have got closer together. Let me represent that with my fingers. And you will see that they actually move closer together, creating an ellipse. The body of the cylinder then is two straight parallel lines, usually converging to a vanishing point, and then a second ellipse, which will be smaller because it's slightly further away from us than the top of the cylinder, an ellipse at the bottom. This can be quite difficult for students to recreate, and it takes a little bit of practice. So we're going to look at that now. In 2D drawing, the cube, sorry, the square is the base of our drawing, and a circle fits inside a square, touching the midpoint of each face of the square. Well, the same rule applies even if we're drawing in 3D. The only difference being that the flat square shape is at an angle, following the rules of perspective. This means that this corner of the circle is quite sharp, here and here, and these corners are quite shallow, generating an ellipse. Let's try that again. Find the centre points and you have sharp curve and shallow curves. These ellipses then can form the basis of your cylinders. The rule also applies to horizontal flat surfaces sharp curve, long curve, parallel lines. Cylinders and cones do take a lot of practice and it's worth mastering the basic construct of an ellipse and practicing it over and over until you can draw ellipses quite comfortably. One last time then Establish your square in perspective, find your centre points, you've got a sharp curve and a long shallow curve. If you're drawing a cylinder you will have a second square, sharp curve, sharp curve, shallow curve, you won't be able to see the back if it's a solid object. And then parallel lines to join them up. And then it's a case of light, medium and dark shading. Now the shading on the cylinder is gradual. As the surface moves away from you, curves away from you, the reflections will move away. The light's still coming over our left shoulder, so the area that catches most of the light will probably be about here. And as the cylinder curves away from us, the light will be reflected away from us, therefore creating areas of dark, medium. There's our light. This area will be medium, so give it a second layer of colour, and then when I've done those flat lines, it would be dark as it curves away from us.